Hey guys, welcome back to part 17 of the Firestore tutorial. So in the last video we learned how we can create, query and update arrays in Firestore. And in this video we will learn how we can do the same with nested objects. For this we will change our node document similar to what you can see here. So in the last video we added our text in form of a list of strings. And in this video we will change the text to a nested object. So instead of a list of strings we have different key value pairs where the tag itself is the key in form of a string, and for the value we simply pass a boolean. And until now we know how we can query and update these top level fields in a document. We could say okay we want to retrieve all documents where class is equal to mammal. And we also know how we can change this value. And in this video we will learn how we can access these nested fields. So we could say okay we want to retrieve all documents where clever inside the keywords object is set to true. Or how to change this value. But this is not very hard, so let's go into Android Studio. And first let's go into our node class. Because as I said, we want to change our text list to a nested object. And we will simply use a map so we don't have to create our own Java object of type string, comma, boolean. Then we copy this map string boolean, so we can change it here in the constructor as well. And at the bottom, in our get text method, like this. Then we go into our main activity and up into our add node method, where we get an error because we still try to pass a list. So again, we change the list of type string into our map and we set it to a new hash map. And then to fill this hash map with our text, we have to loop through them with four for each string tag in our tag array. We want to take our text map cal.put. For the string, we pass the tag itself. And for the value, we pass true. The value doesn't really play a role here. It's just about how we can access this field later. And now our error here is gone because now we pass a map. In our load nodes method, we still get this warning here because getTex now returns a map and not a list of strings. So instead, we only want to get the keys here, which are our text strings. So we simply call dot keys it. And now let's run our app like this and add some of these tags. Okay, I have deleted all the old documents, so let's add some new ones, like in the last video. There should be enough, let's refresh it. And as you can see, this looks similar to what we had before, but now instead of an array, we have key value pairs. And text is now of type object instead of array. If text would be a Java object which has these fields, this would have the exact same result. And I have added different tags into these different documents. And now let's say we want to retrieve all documents where tag one is equal to true. So let's go back into Android Studio where we are still in our load nodes method. And here in the last video we called where array contains. And to query for our nested fields, we have to set it back to where equal to, which we already knew from the previous videos. And now we want to check for tag one equals true. But tag one is not the top level field. So we can't just write where equal to tag one true. Instead, we have to access it over this text field. And we do the following way. Tags dot tag one. This is called dot notation and this is simply how we access these nested fields. And we don't want to check for a string, we want to check for a true. Let's start it. And out of our three documents we have two which contain tag one equals true. And there they are. And with dot notation we can also update these fields. So let's test this as well. For this we go down into our update array method and let's rename it again with shift F6. And we call it update nested value. And this method is still called in our onCreate method when we start the app. I'm gonna copy one of the unique IDs and I want to change tag1 to false. But we can also set it to a different value, like a number for example. So here I pass the document ID, delete this line. And the same as before, we access this field over text.tag1 and for the value, we pass false. 
And now when we start our app, this value should be updated. And this worked. Of course, we can also delete this field, the same as we delete other fields, with field value dot delete. And it's gone. And if you have Java objects instead of maps, you can of course also create deeper nesting, because these Java objects can contain other Java objects, but the concept stays the same. If you want to access deeper values, you simply add more dots to it. We can actually do it right away. So let's write dot nested one dot nested two and we want to set this value to true. And now when we run it, let's see what this does to our document. As you can see, tag one is now a nested object, which contains nested one as another nested object, which on the other hand contains nested two with the value true. And of course the same way you can also query for deeper nested values. But if we would try to run it now our app would crash, because our node class doesn't contain a field for this nested map. But this was just for presentation anyways. So if this video was helpful please leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe for upcoming parts of the Firestore tutorial. Take care.